How many more signs? Uh, most of the signs that uh, I'm aware of have already happened, uh, but uh, there is a potential Mashiach in every single generation. Uh, the truth is that the people that knew the most about Mashiach, like for example at the time of the Gemara, they were scared uh, for Mashiach to come for a lot of different reasons. And uh, the, uh, I know that people today are looking forward for Mashiach, but that's usually because of ignorance. Uh, most people don't realize that once Mashiach comes, it becomes the, uh, the big judgment. And whatever a person is, that's what they are. And uh, the more a person learns, the more they realize that whatever they are is typically not enough. They have to do a lot more. And a person is going to regret that they didn't do more tshuva, they didn't do more mitzvot. So quite frankly, the more a person knows, the more they're focused on things that are not necessarily Mashiach. They're focused on themselves. They're focused on fixing themselves, on serving Hashem, on doing more. You didn't see uh, Moshe Rabbeinu look forward for the Mashiach. In fact, Moshe Rabbeinu wanted to stay in this world so he can serve Hashem. Adam Rishon wanted to stay in this world so he could serve Hashem. All of the most righteous people that ever lived wanted to stay in this world so they could serve Hashem. They weren't looking for Mashiach to come. They were looking to serve Hashem. Why? Because the more a person knows about Hashem and knows about Torah, the more they want to serve Hashem. Whereas Mashiach, in essence, is the culmination of this world and, in essence, is the end of a, uh, of a servitude of Hashem. And typically, the more a person does not want to serve Hashem, the more they desire Mashiach. Why? Because they think that Mashiach is going to be a time where they can just take a break and just relax and it's like heaven and their, their debt is going to be paid off and their marriage problems will be fixed and their, their kids are going to be good all of a sudden and everything's going to turn into really good. And in reality, it's not so much that. If a person is, a, uh, uh, is, is not at his best, uh, he uh, should focus on uh, things that are not really relevant to Mashiach. Rather, they fix, uh, should focus on things that are relevant to fixing themselves. Why? Because when Mashiach comes, a lot of the, uh, all of the judgment comes, and a lot of the things that people will be judged for, they don't even realize their, their, their problems. Uh, like for example, if a person dies, if a person dies, and he didn't have a, uh, he didn't get married. Anybody here thinks it's a problem? One person thinks it's a problem, the rest of you don't think it's a problem. Okay, if a person, a person got married, but he didn't have a kid. Do you, anybody here thinks it's a problem? No, I'm not talking about problem with, I'm not talking about problem like his personal problem. I'm talking about God has a problem with it. Why? Why would God have a problem with it? He's the one to decide if you have a kid or not. To bring, okay, okay. So let's say, for example, he tried to bring a kid, but he didn't bring a boy. Anybody here think it's a problem? Okay, it's an obligation, but it's a mitzvah ta'aseh. It's, it's not a mitzvah lo ta'aseh. Meaning he's not, he, didn't, he didn't forsake Shabbat. He didn't violate Shabbat. He didn't eat non-kosher. He just didn't have a boy. Is that a problem? Logically, the answer is no. Biblically, it is. Why? He was supposed to try hard. He was supposed to have more merits. He was supposed to pray for it. He was supposed to do a lot more things in order to do that. Meaning there's a lot of things that people will be judged for that they don't even realize are a problem. So when people say Mashiach now, Mashiach now, Mashiach now, typically it's because they don't understand what that means. Like the whole Chabad movement of Mashiach now is full of ignorance. It has nothing to do with actual real knowledge. You're never going to see a Gdola Do ever say Mashiach now. Never. It's never, it's never, you're never going to find it in any books from the great, greatest tzaddikim in, 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 uh, 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 of Chabad themselves before the Lubavitcher Rebbe. You're never going to find it from the Baal Shem Tov. You're never going to find it from Abu Vadi. You're never going to find it from uh, Rabbi Akiva Iger. You're never going to find it from uh, Rabbi Wasserman. You're never going to find it from the Chafetz Chaim. You're never going to find it, even in the Gemara, you're never going to find Mashiach now mentality anywhere in the Torah. Never going to find it. Why? Because what Mashiach means is the culmination of the world, which means that whatever you are, that's it. Now, anyone that thinks that they're ready is not ready. How do we know? David Melech didn't think he was ready. Moshe Rabbeinu didn't think he was ready. Rabbi Eliezer ben Holkinos, the rabbi of Rabbi Akiva, didn't think he was ready. The biggest tzaddikim in the world didn't think they were ready. Somebody came to uh, uh, Rav Steinemann. Allah wa shalom, just died a few years ago. One of the greatest tzaddikim that lived in the last hundred years, and ever. And uh, he was a uh, avrech in a call that had a little bit of money. And he told the Rav Steinemann, listen, for the Rav, I just finished building this house. It was a three years it took, and it was a, it's a beautiful house. We got some money and everything. But now that it's finished, it's such a beautiful house, I'm scared 
that it's going to take some of my merits in Gan Eden. What does the Rav think? Do you think it's going to take some of my merits in Gan Eden? Rav Steinemann is already 90-something years old. And he looks at it, the guy, he looks at his gabai, one of his helpers. He says, look at this. Here we have a Jew that's already in his 90s. Every moment of the day he thinks about, is it possible for him to avoid Gehenom? And yet here we have this youngster that is sure that he's going to heaven so much so that he's worried about losing a piece of it because of his house. Meaning that the more a person knows, the more he knows his obligation, and the more he knows about the depth of judgment, and the more he's concerned about those things, those obligations, rather than the salvation. Why? Because the salvation is never something that uh, uh, the sages say, oh, when the salvation comes, all of the tzaddikim are going to be saying, yay, Mashiach, go Mashiach now, and start putting tapes and CDs from back in the day about Mashiach. And that's not going to happen. You know what the Chachamim say about Mashiach happen when he comes? All of the tzaddikim will start crying. All of the tzaddikim will start crying. Why? Because Hashem is going to show them the mountain of obstacles they had to overcome in order to survive Mashiach. And all of the Rishayim will also overcome. Because Hashem is going to show them the little hill of obstacles that they didn't want to overcome. And therefore they're going to be destroyed. Meaning no one is going to scream Mashiach now even when Mashiach is now. Why? Because it's not a culmination of, oh great, um, now everything is going to be taken care of, but quite the opposite. It's going to be an achievement for those that are concerned about serving Hashem non-stop to the point where they don't have time to think about, is He going to come, He's not going to come. Why? If I'm thinking about Him coming, not coming, I'm not doing my job. It's not helping me serve Hashem better by determining whether Mashiach is going to come to this war with Russia and, 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 and Ukraine or it's the next war that we don't even know about yet or it's the... None of that's going to help you serve Hashem. What's going to help you serve Hashem is doing mitzvot, working on army dot, fixing ourselves, helping people do tshuva, all of those other things. And the more a person is concerned with those things, the less he's concerned about the exact timing of Mashiach. Hence the reason why the Rambam writes, anyone that puts a time on when Mashiach comes is cursed from heaven. And it's, 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 it's a big thing for the Rambam to say. Cursed from heaven to say that the Mashiach is going to come at a certain time? Yes, cursed from heaven. We see from here that it's cursed from heaven in a couple of ways. Cursed from heaven because he's going against the Torah and putting a timing on something. But cursed from heaven also from the mentality. From the mentality of thinking Mashiach, Mashiach, Mashiach. Look what happened to Chabad. Look what happened to Chabad since the Lubavitcher Rebbe has, 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 has left this world. It's deteriorated to the point where many, much of it has, has turned into almost a different religion. With all due respect to the history of Chabad and all due respect to the good that Chabad still does in this world, if you look at the amount of Talmidei Chachamim that, you know, that actually give this world a reason to exist and you count how many of them come from Chabad today, it's almost non-existent. If you see how much wisdom is delivered to the masses by rabbis, by Talmidei Chachamim, and you count among them how many are Chabadniks, it's almost non-existent. If you see how much heresy comes to the world, heresy, things that are against the Torah, God needs you, or, or, or that uh, nobody goes to Genom, everybody goes to heaven, all types of nonsense that comes to the world, and you see Chabad is the dominant force there. They're producing more heresy, more garbage in the world than simply anybody, even more than reform. Because nobody counts the reform as Jews anymore. So it's, it's sad that that happened in the last 30 years. It's sad, why? Because the history of Chabad is monumental, it's beautiful, it's amazing. If you read some of the stories, you read some of the books, you read the Tanya, you read all of the, the Shulchan Al-Kharab, you read anything that they wrote, that Sadiqim really wrote and actually said in history, it's unbelievable. If you compare that to today's so-called movement, it's simply, it's, it's two different religions. Why? The priority shifted from God to a person. Hence the reason why you see, unfortunately, unfortunately, there is a little bit of, uh, not a little bit, more than a little bit of work being done between a different religion that believes in a guy. And they're working together. There's a movie, a cartoon movie, I just found out today, that uh, was made about Avraham Avinu's life. Uh, and apparently was a joint forces uh, project between Chabad and uh, the church. 
Chabad in the church made a religious movie. Find me one Pusik that says it's allowed to do such a thing. One Pusik. One Pusik that says it's allowed to do such a thing. So again, if the Lubavitcher Rebbe was still alive, he would never allow such a thing to happen. If the Balatanya was still alive, he would never allow such a thing to happen. No, but so, so that's the thing. So it's, it's important for us to understand. We have to always remember the number one focus, number one focus of our life is to serve a Kadosh Baruch Hu. Not to look for salvation for ourselves, not to look for joy for ourselves, not to, uh, to, to look for any type of pleasure. You have pleasure, you have good, you have panasa, you have to pray for it, but that's not the purpose of your life. Your purpose of your life is not Mashiach. Your purpose of your life is not to, uh, 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 to uh, uh, have the biggest uh, house. The purpose of your life is to serve Hashem to the max. That's the purpose of your life. The moment we transfer that purpose from serving Hashem to serving a person, whether that person is a rabbi or a person is yourself, you have turned from, away from God. You've turned away from Judaism. And that's, that's in essence where a lot of things go wrong. And this is part of the reason why the, the Gaon Mivilna was very much against Hasidut altogether because that's what he foresaw. He foresaw that Hasidut is shifting the focus from God to the rabbis. Which he is right, to a certain extent. Not about all Hasidut, surely there's a lot of good Hasidim, good Sadiqim that, uh, that are around the world. But if you look, if, if, if all we had in the world is, let's say, the, the, the Chabad and Breslov movements that are what we hear about the most, then the Gaumi Vilna was 100% right. The world would be better off without them. Jews would be better off without them. On the other hand, if you're talking about 50 years ago, 50 years ago, then no. It's perfectly fine to have them. It's good to have them. It's great to have them. It's wonderful to have them. Why? Because there was still the, the, the same common belief. And that's the thing. That's one of the things when, when you don't have a leader that's going to, that rabbi that's going to lead you back to where you need to be. Right now, there's in essence no leader in Chabad. Everybody's their own, it's a, everybody's a cowboy. Everybody does whatever they want to do. Nobody calls us shots. Everybody has their own, their own shul, their own bankroll, their own $30 million building, their own donors. Sometimes the donors are Christians and, and idol worshippers. Sometimes they're politicians. Sometimes they're against the Torah, whatever. It's, there's no boundaries. As long as it's money and it's green, it's... The check, is, the, the check is cashed. Fine. The reality is, Rabutai, is that without leadership, Judaism simply cannot exist. That's what Rabbi Akiva says. Rabbi Akiva says the rabbis are like the wings on a dove. Judaism is the dove, but the rabbis, the sages, are the wings. Without the wings, the bird dies. And that's, 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 that's in essence what's happened. What's happened in the world today is that even the gdolei adol, the righteous sages that we have still, Many people don't listen to them. Many people don't listen to them. You know, people say, oh yeah, it's too bad that Rav Kanievsky passed away. Did you listen to Rav Kanievsky? Did you read any of his books? Or you just saw his picture on, you know, on some screen once in a while and makes you feel good? That's the thing. It's like, it's, 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 it's for us to truly uh, know uh, uh, which direction to go in, we have to know what Torah says. And Torah says, don't make the primary focus a person, don't make it the Mashiach, and don't even make it yourself. Make it serving Hashem. The more you focus on serving Hashem, the more happy you will be. The more happy your daughter will be, the more happy your wife will be, the more happy everything, the more happy Hashem is going to be. Why? Because serving Hashem is for your own best interest. It's just that it doesn't come to us naturally. Therefore, Hashem gave us the instructions.